Hello, hello, hello. Let's try this. This will be my first actual live stream by myself. I haven't done this ever. So, how's everybody doing tonight? Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And let's see what the comments are. Really creative travel? Hey, how's it going? Is there anybody here? Susan! I won't tell. I promise. I can't even hear myself, so this is weird. How's it going, Susan? So, let's see here. This is my first one, so I'm going to try and use some of these creative things here that I've made up for other live stream software. So there is a the little banner screen up there I'm trying to get a video clip to upload, but it's not seems to be working. Susan, you feel like talking? Hey, adventure. Why don't you come up? Here's the, the so they're running a deal right now for StreamYard. It costs $10 a month. If you want the link, just let me know. And we'll see what we can do to uh, get that for you. Fantastic travels. So there's the, there's the link there. Fan City Adventures. How's it going? How's it going, everybody? Ah, oh, Gina Payne, look at that. RB Adventures, my brother from another mother. That's right. Hey, G. Blue Wave, you didn't have to do that. This is my first live. I'm trying to uh, do something else, go outside of my wheelhouse and get uh, get some things going here. But I do appreciate that. Anybody wants to come up, you're more than welcome to. I got the, the link there, and we'll see how this works out from this end. Man, Odyssey. Susan, are you going to come up? Sherry, you at you at home? You're on your phone. Okay. Blue wave. I do appreciate that. Ah, oh, see, now I'm learning how to use this. I got it. Everybody's talking. There now it catches up. Gina, you didn't have to do that either. But I do appreciate it. Hey, I can actually hear myself now. That's weird. So there's the link again. If anybody's interested in coming up, just uh oh hey. That's what that noise was. What's up, Steve? What's up? How you doing? Good. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Did you get your fan fixed? Nope. Nope. The parts still haven't come in? Nope. Waiting for parts. Oh, the Amazon elves are not working with you tonight? No. It says Tuesday, but uh, it's arrived here in town. So we'll see how long it takes to get from oh. in town out here where I am. Oh, I know what that's like. Get that stuff happening all the time. Yeah. Here in this park anyway, because they aren't open on the weekends. So anything that gets there throughout the weekend typically won't come in. 
Bob saying hi. Lucky I'm working dog on, is on here. Well, get the right pieces. It usually works better. Yeah, and uh, the the bolt issue is I just made that worse. So yeah, yeah, you were getting a little upset. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, frustration yeah. has set in. Yes, I could tell that just by the just by the text. I'm going well, man. I'm not trying to add to it, really. I knew you weren't, but it is what it is. And when the parts come in, and you need some help, I'll come help you. Yeah, I had to buy a new tool. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, let's you, just say, you know those little things that the, the bolts right into? Yeah. Yeah, I got to replace one of those. Oh, you stripped it, huh? No, oh, it's pretty much locked in there pretty good. Nice. But, Can you get it out? Um, one way or another, it's coming out. Uh, vice grips? Maybe a pair of vice grips on the other side and yeah. cutting off the underside. Oh, well, you know, we don't want to cut the underside off, though. So, but I don't have a die kit that seems to be the same size, so I'm going to end up having to replace it one way or another. You'd always go a little bit bigger. True. You could go to, I think you can go to AutoZone and get one of their dies. Borrow it for the afternoon and make it a little bit bigger and just go see if you can find that bolt that same size. Yeah, That's probably the easiest way. I did find the uh, four new bolts with the new thermostat. Mm. And it took me going back to Amazon looking and saying, hey, you know what? Maybe I should look in that other box. Yeah, usually that helps. So. We already had to cancel our plans for the weekend, so it is what it is. Yeah. Anything special for Thanksgiving? No. I've pretty no. much been sitting, sitting here watching other people's lives all day, and uh, we had spaghetti for dinner. Nice. Yeah, way to go someplace else. Wish I had Thanksgiving. The park had Thanksgiving that you could order and have delivered. Ooh yesterday and then today we had more and of course they sent home a whole bunch of it with us like, uh, you seem to be breaking up every once in a while probably my internet happy thanksgiving lisa lisa so, uh, well, when, when Sherry coming back? Probably next weekend. I don't know if she's in the, she was in the chat. She hasn't really, she's at her mom. So I'm not sure when she's coming back, but we've got a lot of plans, a lot of things that need to get done to her RV before she goes that way. I want to check her batteries. I don't think those have been replaced in a while. Probably not. The person she got it from said had some videos and I was watching a few of those and I was like, Oh, that's nice. Uh oh. I think I think she got it from Lucky Dog. Yeah. Uh oh. There's Susan. Hi, sweetie. I'm a, I'm a Susan. Hello. 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 Susan, you're in Indiana right now, aren't you? Yep, down here in the southern part of Indiana. Do you it's going know, cold, cold, cold. You know the, the channel uh, travels with the Del Delaney's? Yeah, they're up in northern Indiana. Yeah, I've heard of them. They're in Sevierville. Oh, they are? Yeah. We're going to be a, there December the 11th. They did a live last night or the night before last. I don't remember which. 
you know, we got we got to head to Pigeon Forge uh, December 11th. <laughs> a creative travel says I'll let anybody up on my panel. That's why you're here, oh, Susan. Hush. Oh, hush, you little Bama fool. <laughs> There's your chance to yeah. pay him back. Ford man's back. <laughs> Kenneth, you going to come on and come up here too and kind of just sit there like you did? Like you just sit there. <laughs> I'm checking the chat. I love giving him a hard time. I had him in the last one just completely. The last live I was in, Lucretia's, and he was just completely. I had him redder than red and he couldn't breathe. <laughs> RV weekends. Hey, welcome to the chat. Uh oh, Boomer. Yeah, Papa, oh my Papa Drew sent me a video. They was all doing karaoke in the RV. What in the world, Boomer? Yeah, I didn't get to see that live stream because I was over at the the family's house. My family here. I just came in to say hi to these new people that I haven't met yet. That's all. Okay. Say hi. 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 <laughs> hi, Lance. You ass. <laughs> say hi. I don't, you said hi. I wanted to say bye first. Okay. Go ahead. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love messing with Lance. Lance is so much fun to deal with. The last stream, we were cracking it up. Something fierce. Yeah, we were, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Hello, I'm Lance buddy. from Canada. Nice to meet you, Susan. And I don't know this gentleman's Hi. name. I'm Steve. 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 He's, a, he's a Floridian, too. We were in a chat he, before a long time ago. Floridian. On uh, Gary's. Mm -hmm. Long yeah, time ago. Shiny, nice to meet mm -hmm. you. Officially. Hey, yeah, I saw you uh, holding down the four door there, Lucretius. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I was uh, the co host for the day. So true. I think you were at times you were the host for the day. Or the host for the day. She was she eating was turkey. Dancing. Who was dancing. singing the karaoke? Yeah, I was doing that too. Hi, all. Welcome, Ron. Yeah. Man, that's a sad thing. I can't do my, my usual here. I can. You coming every Thursday night, Eric? Ah, oh, this is my first live. Oh, ever? I just no, I've done them before in the past, but this is the first one where I've just actually just got on and started doing it. I had uh, different softwares was using OBS before, and I didn't like the way it worked. And Streamyard, they have running a special deal this week for Black Friday, and it's $10 a month instead of the normal 25 I got that email. I got, yeah, I got that email. It was $10 a month. Yep, and I signed up for it tonight, and here we are. I just Is there a free the version? Yeah, but it's really limited. Yeah. You only get so many hours and so much time. And so, so many said, if anybody, 20, if anybody wants... What do you want, Kat? I don't know if we can do all this. I don't know if my internet's strong enough, but there's the uh, the other one. Hey, everyone. What's up, Kenneth? Papa I'm Drew was singing. You. That should be I hilarious. Oh, Papa Drew was found up today. Aloha, Conk. Hey, welcome. Let's do it. How am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm down here in Florida. A couple of us are. We've got a Canadian. We've got an Indianian and a hey. Tennessean. Hey. I don't know why I would know Indiana Indiana boy, but he's not up here yet. Usually he'd be giving me a hard time. Let's not go that route, Rally. I'm kind of a half and half. I still got property in Tennessee and Indiana. I'm a half and half. Some things are better off left unsaid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Beer and Oaks. Kenneth. 
Hey, lucky dog. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Getting it all straightened out. So, did you all cook turkey today? Yeah. I didn't. We went to the in laws, or in not in laws, oh, family, and we went over and ate dinner with them. Well, after two hours, we finally got our food. Yeah, they're not that far away from here, Steve. It's like a twenty-minute drive. Cool. Well, we did we did Cracker Barrel. I'll oh, see. Me and Dad did Food City today. Oh, no, that, that was too much food for me. Just me and Jim in oh, the RV good. fridge. So I've done those dinners before. We've gotten it before. Did you park the guard via Cracker Barrel? No. <laughs> we drove there. Um, but we ordered it over the phone. And they said it will be there, be ready when we got there. He's well, we got one. there. And after two hours later, we got the food after Jim cussed out the manager. So we may not oh. be welcome back. Jim would barrel. never do that. <laughs> Oh yes, he did. Oh, well, sure one he lady two hours later. her seven thirty that morning. So. Oof. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, We may be banned from Cracker Barrel. I don't know. <laughs> just <laughs> the just one or one. all of them. <laughs> that one. Well, we don't know. <laughs> wow. The next one. Disguise yourself when you go to the next one. Yeah, there you go. Just in case they have your picture on the walls in their restaurant. Oh, look at Indiana boys starting up already. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Yep. It's on now. Here we go. Oh, you guys are related? Oh. I did not know that. What? Oh. Yeah. You don't see the resemblance? <laughs> you don't see the resemblance? I, I, <laughs> no, Aaron doesn't have a phone I, in his hand. I, I don't see any resemblance. Uh -huh. I don't see I don't see hands, so I don't know. <laughs> Show us your hands, everybody. My hands. <laughs> That's been a long standing. There was joke. a delay from Kenneth there. You notice that? <laughs> There's always a delay. There we go. <laughs> always. <laughs> Hello, Dreams on Wheels. Yeah, I'm with it. <laughs> That Indiana boy. Sheesh. I was going to say something. <laughs> Just waiting for a comment. So you can't give us the good news because you're going to wait for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But it's it's good news, I'm assuming. Yeah. Good. Is it what you were hoping for? Well, we got part of it. Part of oh. it. We won't tell anybody. Pumpkin pie, cool with. Mm, yeah. yeah, that was a surprise. Yeah. No. Yes, that's that was the cool whip. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, got something today I called. Don't uh, want to know. Pumpkin fritters. <laughs> Lucy, thank you for doing that. Oh, thumbs up! Yes. Yes. I'm gonna do this. Okay. There, you can see there. There, Aaron. Oh, the front half. Now you just got to find the back yep. half. That looks nice. No, I just took it in the parking lot. <laughs> you just took pick it in the parking truck. lot. <laughs> Some random truck. I did it in the racing parking lot. <laughs> there you go. Was it in the Cracker Barrel? It's probably the managers. <laughs> probably the managers. <laughs> no, it would have been cold. I would have had it cold. <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Oh my goodness. Now, when we first started RVN, we, our very first one was a fifth wheel. And we saved our 
hitch thing that you know it goes in the bed of your truck and the fifth wheel hitch. Yeah, we thought, well, we're just going to reuse it and save the cost of mm -hmm. buying just that get new one. Yeah, we're just going to reinstall it because those things ain't cheap. No, they're not. She don't even want to get any of that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Jim just don't know. He, You know that he knows that he doesn't know. <laughs> That's what it is. What does he know? Nothing. Oh, okay. no, no. You just got to remember Susan's right. That's all he needs to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, those bit, those hitches that you put in the bed of the truck aren't cheap. No, they're not. And oh, Bill from Thin Blue Lane had to buy. Well, he just had to buy a new one, wasn't it? He's tore up. Oh, hey, Journey Lee Lee wins. Lee Lee. Lily. Lily in the house. What you doing, Lily? How's things? Where is Lily? There she is. She's saying hi to Lucy. Lucy's here. Megan wants to know who is the gentleman on the top right. Why does everybody want to know Steve? Nobody. Like they just don't I'm go into. Yeah, whatever. I'm a nobody. Uh -oh. I'm Steve, your Avenger RV adventure. I have to go over and fix have that. Have you all heard all the crap that's been going on with the Jayco RVs? They're falling apart. Oh. The Jaycos. Just the Jaycos? Well, I, different, I've seen different one feeds for people who have going down the highway. Mm -hmm. Well, nursing a travel bug, they are. And they're coming de delaminated. Yeah. David Jaco? Jaco is in some hot water right now, is what I understand. But I tell you what, there's not hard there's not a lot of new ones on lots in, around here. The the dealers can't get them in because they said there's not enough drivers to deliver and that they're waiting on parts. They're going to be a lot of used ones up for sale next summer, that's for sure. Well, the guy at um, well, lot here in Clarksville, Indiana, he's predicting by April they won't have any because of so many people going full time. Well, and if we get the second wave of stuff to go through, it's going to be the same issues. Mm-hmm. Because they just can't manufacture them fast enough. And then when they do speed up, then we have all the issues again. So it's right. it's that round right. robin. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's 2008, says, 2009 all over again. Jim says he's going to buy a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> mm. If you're wanting to go to Courtside this summer or this, this winter, I wouldn't recommend that one. <laughs> Be like Captain Jack and have a big old schoolie. Is Indiana boy related to somebody here? He's my husband. Uh, that's, that's what I Susan. figured. That's what I thought. <laughs> well, I think they're having have issues with them all the way around. Um, um, the brand Durango made by what, KZ out of Elkhart. Have you heard of them? I've heard some things about them, but nothing too exciting. Okay, what about Lazy Days? What have you heard about them? Anything? Lazy Days is getting low on inventory. I've called them. It's a two-year wait for a brand new rig. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. i got to look for a used one now. Yes, James, I'm doing a live stream. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but here I am. And what was the other one? Yeah, I think Lily's got it right. I think Jim needs a short bus. I've got to make sure he gets a football <laughs> helmet so he doesn't lick the windows. I guess that's an inside joke. 
with the big old ball swag on my RV yeah. there, Ray. <laughs> We'll get him a flag made. It says oh. India, Indiana boy. We'll work for food. I gotta go yeah, walk I'll my. <laughs> I gotta go, Aaron. I gotta go walk my puppy. Yeah, I can hear him making noise. Yeah. He's not too happy with you right now. No. Hold it, just hold it. Right. <laughs> Take care, guys. Yep. Pop nice back in if you get a chance. Violence. Yeah, I will. Maybe. Okay. All right. Bye. Nice meeting you. Now, I don't know Michael. Anybody know Michael? Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Hi there, Michael. Okay. Michael. All right. I guess he doesn't want to play tonight. And Susan should be back. There we go. Later, Lance. Shauna Craft doesn't keep any any inventory. Well, it's hard to get inventory when you don't have the drivers. They're not pro mm -hmm. producing them fast enough. Most of the used inventory is going fast. Well, that's what KT said. Uh, slow momentum. He said, you know, they didn't have enough. They were need more drivers. Yeah, but then they're just working them to death too. Mm hmm. Not getting any yeah. time off and running from one end to the other. and um, Bill from Thin Blue Lane's getting ready to do it. Start delivering them. I don't know. I don't like driving them on a regular basis. Can you imagine doing it every day? That's a lot of time. But when, especially when they're going from Elkhart to Arizona and or Oregon or Washington. Where, that's a lot of road time and Sleeping in yeah, your they, truck because they can't sleep in the campers. Nope. That's where they modify the that's KT modified the mm -hmm. one he had, took out that front seat. Right. And then uh made a bed on the side. He was supposed to come back by when I was in a mana and and I was gonna help him figure out some other storage spaces for that. Yeah, yeah. what you got to do. Jim says he's going to put two buses together, one on top of the other, and make a two-story bus. <laughs> I think they did that in England already. Maybe I'm a little we, confused. Now, we were out looking at RVs one day, and we saw, we went past a place, and they had a bus, and they chopped the top half off and took boards and built it up to where more or less stretched it to where it's got a higher roof. I was like, dang. So usually what they do is they cut the windows all up and then they add risers to it, like a two and a half, three and a half foot riser. But so that, you can walk all the way down it. Did. I was like, that's wicked. Yeah. Hey, Travel and Granny. So if you're planning on going on the road, that's probably not a good idea right off the bat is try and get one of those buses converted. <laughs> Might have Travel and Granny. Me. And we lost her again. She'll be back. Really? She's been here the whole time? Harry Potter bus. Yeah, that'd be cool. Top of the bottom for Susan. Well, when she's here, double decker Aaron. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to mean, so we'll move on. <laughs> uh, I think that's a bus reference. Oh, okay. I'm not. Oh. For two and a half years. How come you're not doing it now, Ron? And she's back. Yeah. We're well, just having fun tonight. I think, I think it's because her son's playing on these computer games. You go knock him around a little bit then. RVing with G. Well, Good to see you here. You got your internet on your phone? You got to turn off. That turned off. <laughs> <laughs> she, he's talking about you in third person. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before, too. 
double decker buses, Aaron. I'm British. Oh, yeah, I know. No, my buddy um, just bought a Durango. Um, you know, Mark Guido from Grand Adventure. Mm -hmm. he, he sent me the pictures of it. And then he's going to be showing it on his next bit video next week. Oh, cool. And they're, and they're really sharp looking. They really are, but they're hard to find. So I don't know. I don't know. Right now, anything camper related is hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, they're. Hey, Michael, are you. Can you hear um, us now? Oh, I thought maybe I left again. I didn't. I can't hear him. Nope. All right. We'll let you figure that out. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Because I don't type in the in the private chat. Yeah. Ooh, I want to hit that button. Run. Is that oh, Michael too much. from Is that Michael um, from Michael's Adventures? It might be. Too much BS with the DOT. Now, that's going across the board. Even the truckers are complaining about it. Now, we did sign up for that um, that fuel card TSD or whatever it is, logistics. We did sign up for that. How does that work? Because I know I looked at it and it's only for diesel. It is yeah, just for diesel. diesel. And uh, oh. the other yeah. stuff you use for a diesel truck. Um, Bill from Nursing Our Travel Bug pulled up his app on his phone that he, you know they use to find the fuel stations and tells him how much he's going to save. He'll save, he said, anywhere from 30 Here. to 50 cents a gallon on diesel fuel. Yep. So. Wow. Let's see. RVing with I mean, it's, worth, it's better than what we get with that, um, Good Sam one. You want a tip of the day? Don't eat bad turkey. So. Candace, don't see your hands anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why you were doing that. I get it. You ready, Michael? They're pretty busy. <laughs> He's always doing something with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you good? <laughs> okay, I don't know. He said in the private chat he's having audio problems. I hate when that happens. Mm. You want? Let's see. He's having audio problems. Bringing up is having audio problems. But what? Hey, happy boys. <coughs> happy boys camping. Felix. So I started doing live streams. Felix. When are you going to start doing them? There, Felix. Still saying hello. Happy place camping. What else we got? What you looking I'm, at, Kenneth? I'm looking at, the, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat on the YouTube side of this live stream. Mm -hmm. Pro gas card Flying J, and you can get the card at Flying J and get four to five cents off your gas. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably we got not a bad that idea one. either. I don't have that one, but yeah. down south, the yeah, Flying J's are all over the place. Boat. Down south, yeah, you we can got find that those one. flying J cards anywhere. And then up up at home in Iowa, there's like maybe four in the whole state. But it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, every little bit helps. But I was looking into that TSD logistics because it saves you so much more than we were getting with the 
flying J one. I mean, not diesel can be. Dance. Their prices yeah, are Ron. all over the board on that. Wow. I can't believe how much cheaper it is down here than it is up up north. Well, what was uh, we, we paid two twenty nine tonight, and down no, there. Oh. Uh, oh, we didn't buy diesel tonight. We saw two twenty nine, two thirty nine, two forty nine. Yeah, two thirty, two twenty nine, two thirty nine, and two forty nine up here. The pigeon well, Ron, you... I saw it was one eighty. So. Ron, if you're looking at doing a, a cargo trailer, you might want to talk to. Uh, Happy Place Camping, they did one of theirs. You can go check out her videos. Happy Place, if you want to go ahead and drop your link, that'd be great so that he has a, a link to your information. That would be awesome. I want to get me a magnet and magnet fish. Till the first I looked at him. Imagine what we could pull out of the Ohio River. I looked at him. And uh, I haven't sh taken that plunge yet. And I will take you up on that, Felicity. There you go. Now I got to find my stream again. Oh, that's not it. There we go. Now I'm way behind. <laughs> Indiana boy. Uh huh. The YouTube police are going to come get you. They won't arrest Susan. They're just going to take you away. <laughs> <laughs> Still saying hi. We got this going on. The YouTube police, Indiana. Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. James, good to see you here. Happy like place camping is not blue, Larry. So she can't drop a link. Oh, I gave her one. Sheesh. Sometimes it takes a minute to pick up. Uh, yeah, Jim. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go to Virgil Street, no, no. So, any luck with the. Uh, oh, if I ask, you're not going to tell me anyway. <laughs> we talked about the RVs. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait and see tomorrow. I know they did have they did have three of the Series 150s up at uh, the Tampa RV place. But I well, did see that. stuff. I mean, oh, um, what you can find on the East Coast, you can't get on the West Coast. And vice versa. They have two different. Yeah, they have two two different styles. Right. It's weird. Well, there is the Tampa RV show coming up at the end of this month, isn't it? The eleventh uh, January January thirteenth or something like that. Thirteenth no, we'll in Arizona. Yeah, thirteenth or the seventeenth of January. Yeah, I was just looking at it the but other day. I'm just wondering. How are they going? Are they going to have that many RVs there when these dealers are having a hard time getting them in themselves? They will especially bring those in just for the show and not sell them. Yep, tons of them. them. I mean, it'll just be you'll be after about the fifteenth one. They're all start blurring together. It's like, Ugh. and you okay. can walk forever in that show. Yeah, forever and ever there. They're saying that they're going to have uh, 400 different vendors. I was there for three or four days last time. And on the fourth day, I finally found another building that I was never in. Wow. And I thought I walked all the way around the outside completely. And somehow or another, I missed it. Thank you, Ronald. And then if you find, Ron? find something you liked, and then they say, well, you have to order it. Well, two years later, you get it. That's going to be rough. I don't know. Maybe maybe they don't want to pay to have it hauled back. Yeah. 
Well, that's it used to be that's where they got rid of their excess inventory. They would take them down there and then just yeah. sell them all off. But yeah. this year, I don't know how that's yeah. going to work. Yeah, because they like to try to get it out because of tax time. So they don't have to pay taxes on them, these dealers. Well, that's because they're going to be rolling out those new models on the 1st of January. It's mm -hmm. usually, that's where they close everything out. And it's like February or April when they start rolling out the new models. So they want to get as much of that stuff out of there before the new ones roll in. Yeah, the 2022s. Hey, yeah. R being with G. But my plan is to go up to, I want to go up to, well, we've been invited. I actually got invited by Tire Minder to go up and be at their booth for a couple hours and have people come over and do some interaction with uh, their products and mm -hmm. wanted me to go up there and then I take my stickers and stuff along with me and be there to meet other YouTube channels. They're going to do a promotional deal with all the different YouTubers that are doing their products. They're going to have them come up and hang out for an hour or two at a time. So we will probably be there for that. Cool. So if you're in the area, okay. stop by there and they should have a listing of what times we're going to be in the area. I know changing lanes said they were going to be there and I forget what the other one was. Well, the, unless they cancel the it because... We don't even know if they're actually going to have it or not. Well, they've taken reservations for all of the uh, parking or where you can get electricity. Those are all sold out already. Yeah, I, we're just going to go up for yeah, a day. I wonder how they're going to do all that, you know, with the, all these distancing rules. Because that place gets packed. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. as far as the, where the RVs are parked and, of course, up there around the... You know, in the show area and all that. Hey, it's Michael, how's it going? Can you hear me now? Michael? Michael. We can't, we can't hear you, Michael. Nope. I've done that you before and I didn't have my headset turned on. Is he got it turned on? Says he does. But we can't hear you. There's nothing here. Try the little uh, mic icon, the camera mic icon, and see if that works, if you can get that to work on that end. We'll let him play with it for a while. That's so frustrating. I've been there. What's this one? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, that, that, would do, that would delay them going to courtside, though. Yeah, it'd be way out of their way. Oh, is he talking about the uh, kind of talking about the tire monitors? Mm -hmm. Or is he talking about buying four truck tire monitor? <clears throat> he already told me he don't like them. We already had that discussion. He said they're inaccurate and unreliable. <laughs> See, I remember. <laughs> but I wasn't going to bring it back up. It's 1A, but that's okay. Did you mind dropping the link? Oh, I guess. But yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know Ford made a truck. That gum. Don't be a oh, hater. Boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh <laughs> boy. We're Chevy. Got to figure it out, Michael. <laughs> Did you get it figured out? I'm working on it. Can you hear hey. me? Hey, yes, hey. now we can hear you. Hey, Michael, yeah. why don't you go, go ahead <laughs> and uh, yeah, go ahead and tell us about your YouTube channel. Well, I'm actually just now getting started. Oh, that's the best time. You actually found a good community then to uh, to be a part of that because we we uh, help people to uh, get noticed. Well, we're not, we're not a 
sub for sub type thing, but we're a group mm -hmm. of uh, like-minded RVers. <laughs> so tell us about the channel you're working on. Well, um, I, well, I've got an old motor home. Did you read your voice? Well, I'm uh, a tr truck driver, uh, full time slash RV lifestyle full time. <laughs> um, it's a 1982 uh, Pace Arrow. I bought it at a police auction for 550 bucks. <laughs> And so I'm in the process of remodeling and rebuilding this moto, huh? Okay, Michael, could you do me a favor and mute your um, YouTube because you're getting that delay. You're not getting it from StreamYard. You're getting it from uh, from YouTube. Okay, there's a can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. It's just you're you're probably getting two conversations. You're hearing me, and then you're hearing that three second delay on me again of me talking. All right, I. All right, so that should should done it now, right? Well, now you should be able to hear. We can have more of a conversation where you're not. I see something, and you wait for three seconds. Okay. Um, for some reason, my computer is hating me tonight. Well, <laughs> Nor normally I don't have any audio issues, and this is really weird. Well, it happens from time to time. All right, there we go. Okay, let's start off from the top. All right, I've got a 1982 uh, Pace Arrow that I bought at an auction, police auction for 500 bucks. Runs, drives. It ain't the greatest thing in the world, but I've, it's the first time motor home I've ever bought. And I'm also a truck driver. I uh, work full time. I work actually four days a week. And. Um, in the process of remodeling this thing, um, I've had not one, not two, but three floods in this thinking thing within the last six months. <laughs> so wow. I've had to rip my floor up three Oops. times. What happened? What and, happened? Um, so I'm working on getting a YouTube channel up and going. I'm kind of new to trying to get my streaming going. And because I just finally got, because uh, I'm, in a permanent camp spot right now while I'm um, working on this motorhome, even though now we're going into wintertime. And so it's kind of interesting. And I plan to, in the spring, have this hopefully all remodeled. And um, the days that I'm not driving truck, I plan on driving around the state of Nebraska. And oh no, hopefully that'll... <laughs> He's from Nebraska. That's why I said, oh, no. What yeah. part of Nebraska? I'm in uh, south of Lincoln, a little town called Beatrice, or as we all call it down here, Beat Your Rice. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, just, just south, of, south of Lincoln, about 45 minutes. Well, I'm originally from Iowa. That's why I say that about Nebraska. You know, that constant uh, kind of banter between Rivalry. the two states. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, but I'm... I got imported to Nebraska, so, you know, it's not my fault I'm here. <laughs> but you continue to live there. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm lo looking to make him escape out of here eventually. But, you know, hey, at least it's not like New Mexico, the land of entrapment. At least there's there an escape go. here. At least there's an escape. Yeah. But, they tried uh, to suck me in, too. What's that? They tried to suck me in out there too. <laughs> My wife yeah. is from McCook. Oh, oh, okay. Our... My condolences. Yeah, I, that's I, where I got my. That's I where I got to... my first. I got my first speeding ticket in the state of Nebraska in McCook. So, <laughs> but I beat the ticket in court, so it was interesting. I was hauling. Uh, livestock cattle uh, to the JBS beef processing plant, plant over in Grand Island and uh, they said I was speeding and I wasn't and my dash cam got me out of it yeah those are good to have 
And if you don't yes. have one, the, the easiest thing to do is go find an inexpensive uh, action, or action camera and one of those suction cup things and put it in your window. It will save you a lot of hassle if you ever get pulled over. Yes. And um, right now, the state of Nebraska DOT is really hammering on the RVers, um, especially the ones pulling the fifth wheels and travel trailers. They're getting them for their tire rating. That's the big thing right now because a lot of these people that are pulling motorhomes don't understand that you got to have a certain ply tire and tire rating. And the DOT is really catch has found a money revenue stream right now. Well, that's because there's a lot of lot of first time RV owners that are buying up all these RVs and don't know anything about them and just pull them on down the road and so they're just catching everybody. <clears throat> yeah. They are a couple months. He's texting now. And Scott's tapping back to him now. So that's why I'm saying more. And I think Lance is in your basement. Yeah, he's there. He was half naked. Yeah, in his bed, and I'm like, no. No, we're not doing that tonight. <laughs> you talking about yeah, the first time RV uh, or uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Does he do oh, okay Um let's see. Thursday I was coming back from a trip uh from delivering a, a shipment and there was a gentleman that was in a Dodge Ram pickup pulling a fifth wheel travel trailer pulling a boat and behind the boat he had a polaris on the trailer those are those idiots yes i'm a truck driver and if i get caught doing something like that they would bury me below the jail <laughs> well they would take my cdl and laugh at me but that's the whole because thing i know better that's why a lot of states are trying to push for um, people with RVs to have the CDL because a lot of them, you just, it's turnkey. You, sit, you get in, doesn't matter what you're pulling behind it, turn the key and go. And yeah. you're more dangerous yep. than some of the, the truckers that are on the road. Yes. And I mean, we all see Swift and, and all them, you know, uh, see what I fucked up today. And that's what it stands for. Or <laughs> see what I tear up today. But, um, but yes, it is scary to see these new RV owners. Um, I wish they would require them it, to have at least a Class B license. And um, Now, did, now didn't never. Pennsylvania go with that where you had to have the CDL? Didn't Pennsylvania do it? They tried or, or tried or something. I know a lot of the states are pushing for it, but I don't know of any that I haven't heard yeah. of any yet. And this thing is in my face. Well, those that triple toe and all that are just idiots. I mean, yeah, my grandfather, I what is, my grandfather know? did it for many years. He had a, a truck, a fifth wheel, and then he, he pulled a boat behind it. And then one day we stopped at a rest area in Kentucky. And this is back when we had the fifth wheel when we were starting. And we got out and was letting the boys go use the restroom and stretch their legs. And we turned around and looked. And there was this whole family coming out of a fifth wheel after the man just parked. That guy was trapped. And she's been doing that all night. Can on the house. What's up, brother? <laughs> wait, wait. Did you just kill Susan to bring me up? She's gonna be so. No, pissed. she, she dropped. She's been doing it all night. She'll come back. <laughs> but you see how I introduced you, not Aaron. Yeah. Hey, boy, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> You've been drinking again. Hey, K and R. What? What could you tell? <laughs> Your Irish hat on. And Susan's back. The hell you say. K Destination. See? There she goes. 
Susan, I felt horrible because he brought me up and you were gone. I was like, there's no way he kicked you to the curb for me. No. She's better looking. Can I destination? I can't do it. I can't. I just did. Now my wife's going to come out here and go, oh, boy. <laughs> but triple towing and riding in the RV is stupid. Yes, I'm gonna, it is hey, can I respond stupid. to that, Blue Wave? I want to say that that's probably true, but normally it's a little cage driver that has caused the whole issue. Just saying. Well, low and slow. Ventures in well, Xanadu. It, well, it really depends on where the actions. A lot of the actions that are happening that are involving truck drivers and um, the motoring public is this distracted driving and i've seen it aggravates me that seeing people that are pulling or driving period and having their cell phones in their hands and things like that i seen i see driver truck drivers and have tvs on or uh, cd or uh, dvd players on their dashboard watching tv going down the highway and but they do that crazy. in cars though too yes and I wish there'd be more crackdown on that, but there's, they say they are, but they never do. Um, now, I will say this. If you guys are traveling I-40 through Knoxville, uh, the Tennessee State Patrol actually has a tractor-trailer combination that they use to pull mm -hmm. over truck drivers with. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I have seen it firsthand. And not only do they pull the truck drivers over, they're also pulling cars over because they use the troopers in the passenger seat to see if, you know, they're distracted driving and, and you know, which is a good thing. Yeah, you know, Tennessee's pretty tough. Yes, they I'll are. That. Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and, well, Tennessee is really tough, and most of your Commonwealth states are pretty tough. <laughs> She's calling you out again. Yes, I know. And then at Kentucky, right there at the state police post, you'll see them parked every, you know, a little medium pull up, you know, go through area. They're parked everywhere. Yeah. Uh oh. And then you see people towing travel trailers that don't have the sway bar. They don't have all the proper crap. I see that all the that. time. And they'll go down the doing road. Doing that whip tail. Doing that whip tail all the way down the road. And you pull yeah. up beside them and tell them to slow down. And they're like, mm, as you're going by. Yeah. So They give you the famous one finger salute that you're it's number one. Half, half a peace sign. Yeah. That's the way I refer to it anyway. Yeah. On a serious note, I do have a question if one of you guys can answer. Since this motorhome is so ancient and dinosaur. What um, year is it again? It's a 1982 Pace Arrow uh, P30. It's on, it's on the uh, P30 chassis. And, well, my furnace went out the other day. And, of course, in Nebraska, mm -hmm. when we're starting to get cold. Um, it's got the... it's. It's like an original dom Dometic furnace, and mm -hmm. I cannot find a replacement for it. Can I put a 15,000 BTU furnace, like a Suburban or an Atwood in here? The problem is it's going to be the room because it's got to be the same size hole. You'd be better off to get an external tank, say a 100-pounder, if you've got a slide, you can run it right through the slide and into, you can just go get a regular uh, propane heater. That's what we did for now, in Iowa. You know, I don't have a slide on this thing. They didn't invent slides for this ancient dinosaur. <laughs> but like and I said, you, for 500 bucks. You could run in uh, through <laughs> the, where the, the heater goes through, the water heater goes through. There are holes in the floor. Um, right underneath where the the heater's at, and you can run the line up through that way and put your heater 
off toward one wall and it'll at least radiate some heat instead of being without because those are going to be expensive. Okay. Yeah, sure I mean, I'm not... What's that? Just make sure you caulk around that good. Yeah. Okay, because I've looked at... Because um, the way my... Well, excuse the mess, because like I said, I'm in a remodel process, but here, I'll show you down the hallway. Um, right there is my furnace, my heat at the moment, but... Is that electrical um, heat? Yeah, it's, it's a 1500 watt uh, floor heater for now. So like I said, yeah, you got to watch those mess, because they'll tend to, they'll tend to uh, start burning out the extension cords and all kinds of issues. Um, actually, I have. Well, I have that hooked up to a because I'm in a permanent spot at the moment. I'm only paying two hundred dollars a month space rent where I'm at, which is cheap, believe it or not. And I'm on city power, so I actually have a I have two fifteen amp plugs outside on the on the pedestal and i've actually run um heavy gauge um extension cords from the pedestal here and i drilled holes and and i've got a power plug that goes into this um by the sink and and out to the pedestal so i'm not actually using the rving with she says get a wave six or a wave eight i don't know about you but i know i can go get another propane type heater the household ones for a lot cheaper because i used to have an an eight and one of my other rvs and then i went to go get another one and looked at the price and went nah, that's expensive so we didn't go that route well i like um, the waves and i've had, got a lot of questions about them because i've, I've heard that they they burn up they don't you know, they suck up the propane pretty heavy well, there's uh, no thermostat on them, so it's going to run whatever setting you set it at. It's going to run it constantly, so that's why that people say it goes through the, the uh, propane so fast. What we ended up doing was getting a, a Buddy heater, but they also have other brands that have a thermostat on them. That way you can set it at 75 degrees. It will shut off and turn back on with a pilot and turn off and on and maintain a heat level. So that's why I went with that route because I wanted that extra thermostat instead of trying to have it on all night long. And you wake up in the morning and go, why is it so cold in here? Well, you ran out of propane. You ran it all day long and all night long. So that's why we went that, went that way. Yeah, because I looked at um, the suburban uh, furnaces and just put it right in the spot where my uh, original furnace was. But the, uh, uh, again, is the problem is going to be the size. You can find them on Marketplace. You can find them on um, Craigslist. I mean, you can find the used ones, but a lot of them won't come with a guarantee that they're going to work once you get them home. Yeah, I'll tell you what kind of... I think it's a Dometic furnace. Let me pull out my... I was really surprised yeah. I actually had, had this in here. These are hard. I've been reading everywhere on the forums that these are hard to get on these older motor homes. Most of them, they have them on PDF, so you can download them. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, furnace, furnace. Uh, Linda Barker, how are you doing tonight? Did you get to see another live with my name on it? Lucretia's here? Yeah. That's good to know. You even have the original. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You might be able to sell that to your uh, RV museum, make some money. <laughs> might, make, might make a dollar two, make, might be able to make a dollar two ninety eight for a glass of beer, right? There you go. <laughs> Rub two rocks together, you might get a flame. Yeah. Okay. What furnace do I have? All right, Steve. I'm gonna let you talk for a minute. I got to run to the restroom. Okay. So what's happening, Steve? So not much. Just trying to get some work done on the RV. Did you did, did you have um, good Thanksgiving? It was all right. We didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. Oh, that's spaghetti. Oh, you don't eat turkey? No, uh, it's not that. My my wife didn't feel like making turkey, so it's only her and I, and 
we don't need a lot of leftovers. So spaghetti seemed like the thing to do. We were supposed to be out camping, and I thought we were going to have uh, steak and potatoes. Mm -hmm. So I got a surprise when she brought in spaghetti. Oh, okay. I know we uh, our our turkey is about twelve pounds, I think, and it's gonna ha it's gonna be enough to do for about two weeks. Yeah, we're I'm sure. Take, we're gonna take and freeze some of it and put some of it in the fridger and make uh, turkey dumplings and turkey pot pie and. Probably do make some pound cakes out of it too. That sounds good. I I haul turkeys um, and I won't eat the little bastards. <laughs> I, I work for I work for a um, uh, a company called Hendrix Genetics here in Beatrice, and we uh, transport the small um, breeder turkeys. And yeah, I I haul them bastards all year round. I don't want to eat them. Yeah, just don't leave the hatch open on the top. They'll they'll try and fly away. <laughs> Pretty dirty birds, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Oh, they are nasty. Yeah, they they drown what looking at rain as it's as it's coming down. They'll keep their mouths uh, open they, and it'll it'll drown them. Yeah, chickens will do the same thing. Believe it or not. Yeah, it's a, this is a forced air furnace is what this one is. Mm -hmm. um, Most of them are. It's not, um, it's not a Dometic. I can't remember the name of this crazy contraption. Well, anyway, um, you don't have to go through that, all that. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to, it needs to match up size for size for what you've got. If you don't have room for it, then you're going to have to modify to get it in there to work. Yeah, well, this looks like, I mean, it looks like the size of my water heater is basically the size of this one. And that's why I didn't know if I could go with like a, a suburban, uh, a smaller suburban. Well, what I would recommend doing is matching up the numbers and see what the, because it should have a number, a serial number on it. You can go into Amazon and at least give you a link to something that's equivalent. Or you can call the... Oh the uh, manufacturer of it directly and say, Hey, I've got this one and I want to upgrade or it quit working. What do I, what can I do? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm baffled how this, cause it'll, it'll come on and, and everything, but it's blowing. It'll ignite and it'll do one cycle and then it'll go off in the next cycle. It blows nothing but cold air. And, and I've looked for the sail switch and all that, and it's buried so far back in there, I can't get to it. That's why I figured it'd be cheaper to buy a new one. Or if you can find a mobile tech out that way, they can come to your door and actually go through and look at it. And the mobile tech that I, I've had come out here for another issue, he was $136 an hour, and... What I had him look at. He must be the only one in the area then, because if he's charging that much money. Yeah, yeah. We've got one campground just north of me, and that campground is five hundred dollars a month, and that's where he stays. That's actually not that bad. Come down here where I'm at; it's twelve hundred dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a reason I don't I don't visit the Snowbird State. <laughs> Well, we had never done it, so I was like, okay, well, we got a job down there. Let's go down and let's go check it out. Yeah, that's my, my ultimate is to um, retire from driving. I've been driving truck for um, a little over 23 years, and I want to retire from doing that and go RVing full-time and work on getting this YouTube because I'm also a drone pilot, so I fly drones um, for insurance companies and stuff like that. So, what do you got for drones? Clubs. I have a unique Typhoon H, and I also have the H520. Oh. And they both shoot in 4K resolution. Well, dang. And, yep. <laughs> and hey, Don Green Mom, can you go ahead and get Michael's um, uh, information for his site so we can. Uh... Get some people over there for him. 
Yeah, I um, let's see where is my YouTube link. Um, well, I'll do you, it in the private. What I'm gonna yeah, use in the private chat. I, you can put uh, it in there for me, and then I'll run it over for you if, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I'm gonna give you my email address right now, and um, and then I'll send you. And when you send me an email, um, I will Thanks, Steve. send you. Subscribe. <laughs> Indiana boy, how are you going to stay in Indiana for the winter if your wife is going to Arizona? It could be interesting. And going green, mom just put up a link here for you, too. Whoops. That's oh, for RV parts. Yep, for RV parts. Okay, let me bring up. Uh, I got a split screen. All right, I got a split screens again here. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Okay. Michael, what's the name of your channel? Um, I'm in the process of getting it going. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. I have just my private YouTube uh, at the moment. Uh, okay. Well, you can share that with us later. I'll go ahead and put this in there for you. There you go. Yeah, I had to split screens there. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just I'm just now getting everything started because I bought this motorhome, like I said, and I'm just because it's, it's basically I'm looking at uh, the flying RVers. Uh, or flying truckers RV uh, or something like that. I haven't come up with a, a catchy name yet because I'm going to include a lot of my drone footage and stuff like that that I'm flying as I'm traveling. And because my drone, it has a following mode and things like that. So on some of the back roads, I can actually put my drone up in the air and fly as I'm driving, taking some of the older roads. Because I kind of like the vintage RV. Uh, not just because this was old. There's a gentleman that I met that's got a 60. There no, it's a 72. Uh, okay. I got your email here. Um, he's got a 72 Airstream. And yeah, it's Airstream Argosy. Does that sound right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he's completely remodeled. And that thing is absolutely gorgeous. And he spent like fifteen thousand dollars just having it buffed out and and uh polished and i was like holy crap and then he clear coated it so it doesn't have to do it anymore but yeah fifteen grand to have that thing polished out but it looks wow. like it come off the showroom floor so and you might want to check out rving with g he says he's got a video on how to fix those rv furnaces that it might help you out Okay, well, um, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to post my email in the in the YouTube chat. And uh, if people feel like uh, emailing me, they're more than welcome. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can like it. post it in there or not. He's not a you can do it in a private, and then I can get it. Oh, okay. Well, if you can do that, so it's then... In, it's in the private chat now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Kathleen's got a possible name for you. <laughs> Okay, let me bring back up my YouTube because we had that three second delay here. Um, Firefox and Chrome are not liking each other tonight, so I'm having to split screens. Come on. Really? Why are we having. It's a different kind of clear coat that they're putting on that uh, Airstream. Their yeah, it looks therapy. beautiful. Yeah, most people have their Argosies painted. Yeah, I've seen that too because we had those that group come through, and they had quite a few of them painted. Talking about. So you got one new friend out of the out of the group so far. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, uh, uh, Blue Wave. Good to have you on here tonight, and thank you again for that super chat. Good night, Bob. 
telling everybody good night. Question. Uh, I'm looking for a 38 foot Class A with a household size refrigerator installed, and the dealer says I need an inverter. Should I be worried? A big refrigerator drains the inverter. It's not going to be draining the inverter. It's going to actually be draining the batteries. So what you're going to need is a is a bigger battery bank than just the two that are on board to charge to get that inverter to work for any length of time. That's for sure. Yeah. So you're going to want to put solar panels. Uh, the, the biggest expense is going to be for um, running the refrigerator. It's going to be the batteries themselves. So that's something you need to take a look at. Uh, the inverter converts it from AC to DC so that it can run the refrigerator while you're while you're moving or while you're out camping. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, go ahead and leave another question in the uh, comments, and we'll uh, see if we can help you. Yes, I have actually put the ZEP floor wax on my RV because it's an older one and it looks stellar. I touch it up once a year, put on a fresh coat, make sure you wash it really good before you do that. It actually made my older RV look like show, show quality again. The person that told us to talking about Airstreams. Oh, I've never heard of anybody having any problems with those, so. Now you got up to five people. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. There you go, New Horizon. Got gotcha. you. I'll get you after the uh, the stream. Fantastic. Yeah, I guess I've got. I just was just over my my channel. I've only got like five videos up from my uh, drone footage that I've shot in the last eleven months. Nothing great, but yeah, something. Get started. Yeah. New Horizon, that's what we're talking about. That's that floor wax. I put it on mine. I was kind of skeptical. I tried it with one little area, and then I was shocked with how well it turned out. So we went ahead and did it, especially with an older RV, because that coat wears off so fast. Can you use that scratch remover that you use on your car for porcelain sinks to remove stains? I haven't tried it. I can try it here in the park if you want. <laughs> Susan, was, Susan was asking. Oh, I haven't. I have not like, tried that. It seemed like I remember seeing something a while back about using some of that stuff on there. Unpaved Explorer, welcome. Who is he? Who is who? Michael Proctor. Michael Proctor, the That's me. The link is up above. Yeah, I um I was on in another chat group somebody was asking how to remove the uh the black streaks and stuff like that off the side of their campers and what was the best way to get it uh, removed and believe it or not i found the um if you go to any semi-trailer uh facility buy a bottle of a brightener it comes in a one gallon jug put that in a hudson sprayers uh, put four ounces to one gallon and it's really concentrated it's a like an acid but it doesn't eat your gel coat it doesn't eat any um because this this motor home it was so black streaked up from sitting for so long and i sprayed that on on there and let it sit and then i just used a light brush and brushed it and rinsed it and, and it made this thing look like it, you know it wasn't brand new looking but it took all the black black streaks off and if anybody's interested in that just any kind of trailer brightener is what it's called and it cool. works really well. Uh, yeah, Street Smart cool. Steve um, is asking again about his refrigerator. If you've got a household refrigerator in your RV, you won't be able to run it off of propane. Got to be Unfortunately, specific. yeah, it has to be one of the uh, RV-related uh, three-way refrigerators to be able to do that. Now, they do have full-size ones that do run off propane, too. 
yeah, that's we got the side by side. When that one goes, that's what the plan is: is to go ahead and switch over to batteries on ours. That's what they were yeah, just I'm talking gonna... about. That's those black streaks, the watermarks. It's the same, the same concept. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I did. Um, I'm fixing to take a trip down to Hartman, Arkansas, on Monday for work, and um, there, somebody was telling me about a RV salvage yard um, there off of 44 north of Joplin called Colas. And I'm going to swing through there. It's a big old RV salvage yard. I'm going to see what I can, uh, you know, providing the weather's not raining and miserable. Just keep in mind that it's going to be a lot like the pick and the, the pick uh, salvage yards yeah. that you normally go to for your car. You might get it out, get it home, and realize it's not working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the. Where's you know that's what's scary. Um, the pick, we call those uh, pick apart or pickle part. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to go through there and see what what all they have because. Um, mm -hmm. And then somebody told me there was another big old salvage yard somewhere in southern Arizona. Kentucky. There's yeah. a big one in Arizona too. Ah, uh, to answer your question, there, Arving, which you, how do you what do you do to recoat the plastic sinks and tubs? If you go over to my channel, which is uh, you just type in my name in, in YouTube, I've got a video on how to restore a restore plastics. So you can go over and check that out. It'll help you with that question. Uh -huh. Do you use acrylic um, to redo the, the sinks? Is that what you're using? Um, no, but I've heard of people going to the big box stores and getting that, uh, it's a spray paint that they use for household stuff. I've seen that done, but you can't use it for 72 hours. So if you put it in there and you live in it like my, I do, that's a waste of time. It'd be easier to go, go to a salvage yard, find another sink that matches up with that one, paint it, and then swap them out. And I'm fixing to uh, rip my countertop, my uh, stove and sink and all that stuff out because uh, that uh, particle board countertop that they put in this thing, is it's so dry rotted and, and horrible. Um, I've got a friend of mine that uh, makes those acrylic uh, coffee mugs and stuff like that. He's actually going to uh, pour me in a, it's going to be like a, inch and three quarter or two inch clear acrylic countertop polished and everything with um graphics and stickers in it and stuff like that and that'd gonna, be cool yes yeah. yeah i've and seen the ones where I'm they've done the the pennies and i've also seen the ones where they've traveled all over the place and had beer the beer tops from all over and they put those on oh, and then run a clear road across those two yeah that's cool let's see not not steve in the panel but the other steve the street smart steve is still asking about the big refrigerator running off of propane again if it's a residential refrigerator they don't run off of propane you have to have the rv specific uh refrigerators in order to do that so if you're running a residential which uses the 120 just like your household you have to plug that into an inverter and then you have to have the batteries and then you got to have solar. It's just not going to run by itself. All right. I think I got all those. No, nope, don't want to run that one. Michael Proctor. There you go. Could be the thermocoupler or the sail switch. They're really not hard to work on. It's just getting knowing what you're what you're looking at, and it can be really intimidating when you the first time you crack open one of those. Yeah, I tried looking for it. I um, and it's that old forced air furnace is because yeah. the other option I looked at was those um, cheap diesel fired heaters that you see on Amazon for like a hundred. Uh, 150 180 bucks 
you know, then you had to carry you know different fuel type with you and stuff like that. But f uh, from what I've heard, those are hit and miss with the Japanese ones, uh, whether they work right or not. And with the extra fuel, because I thought about doing that for a while too, was just to have another source of heat. I like to have a minimum of three types of heat. You've got electric, you've got the propane, and it's always coming up with that third one as to what you want to do. The propane is going to be a lot wetter, so you're going to have a lot more moisture. Or the diesel, you're going to have more of a dry heat that doesn't cause all the condensation. So that's got to kind of balance that back and forth as to what you want to do. Yeah, I looked at those Chinese ones and because we have in my in my rig in my semi we have the ones that's made by s bar and which is they're like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars for those units yeah or you can spend but the, those get the other ones i mean i trust me i've watched a lot of those videos and i've contemplated back and forth about doing it the thing is those you can actually the one the s bar brand that we have in the, in the trucks, you can literally crack open a can of soup in about 30 minutes. That soup's going to be hot. And you put it cool. right in front of that. Yeah. Um, a lot of drivers use those to um, heat, heat up food and stuff like that while they're, while they're parked. You know, they set up, uh, put them in an aluminum pan and, and heat up their soups that way. I know it sounds crazy, but kind of like the old days. It works. With the radiator, we put the put the food in the engine and and go that way with the aluminum foil. Yep. Uh, going green, mom. Yes, that's that's exactly what I just did, and that's why I'm live streaming tonight because I went ahead and did that. So, thank you for letting me know, sending a reminder. RVing with G. Hi all. Happy Turkey Day to you too. Also, can you put? their links up so that I can get those. Um, if I can get one of my two moderators to go ahead and put my link up there. and I, I think who somebody else was talking about how to do some other things that might help out uh, Street Smart Steve there out. That would be awesome. Now I can't find out where now I was on you, the chat. Now if you go with a household um refrigerator in your in your coach um don't you have to be aware of the wattage and the amps that it draws off your inverter and, and, right that's what we're talking about with the inverter because if you the two house batteries that you have are there for your electrical use for your your lights and that also uh that 12 volt runs your refrigerator and also runs the power to your furnace so you're going to need a bigger battery bank to help support that extra wattage that you're pulling out of the refrigerator. Yeah, because I know truck drivers that have tried to put, um, oh, they go buy them Walmart refrigerators, and they try to run them on a 1,500-watt power inverter. And, of course, our semis, you know, we've got three or four batteries in our trucks, and they don't, a lot of them household refrigerators, they don't like to be bouncing going down the highway either. That's something to think about. I had one in the last RV. I, before this, before the bounder, I had a Fleetwood, was it 1988 Fleetwood Limited. And that refrigerator went out and I put one of those other ones in and I never had a problem with it. When I sold it, the guy was like, whoa. But you couldn't go anywhere. As soon as you pulled out, there was no electricity to it. I mean, I always planned on upgrading it, and then we got into this, and this one works great. But there's you just you just can't plug in an inverter on two batteries and expect it to run the that type of load. It'll do it for an hour or so, maybe two, maybe more. Aaron, I'll be right back in. Your what? Well, I'll be right back in. Okay, cool. Well, now I know some guys, um, like for the tra the semi trailers that have these lift gates on, they're actually um, when they plug in their their pigtail for their lights and stuff, they've actually have a way to put a, a charge converter to charge their 
their batteries for the lift gate. I wonder if something like that could be done. You can use that while you're traveling to from location to location, and you have a household refrigerator. I wonder if you can use the power from your your alternator vehicle battery from your alternator to keep your batteries charged while you're in transit. You can do that too, but that's not going to work like in your situation where you're not traveling right now. How are you well, going to no, charge I, I, that when you're not moving? Right. But, um, well, if I'm going down the road, I'm going to hit, you know, the alternator and I'm still off batteries from that. But, but I was referring to the guys that have the, uh, that are pulling the, the fifth wheels and the, and the pull behinds. There was a way they could, um, run. Th know, there's a way of doing it. it. It's, a, it's a regulator that goes through and it's kind of, it switches it. I mean, you could do a lot more research on it. I don't know all the ins and outs of the solar system. I can create you a, a simple one, but and it's still a lot of work to be drawn on for your. Uh... Yeah, imagine your Odyssey. Welcome. I haven't talked to you in a while. Going green. There's Michael Proctor's again. If you want to go over and uh, Michael's got a, a brand new uh, YouTube channel that he's starting up. There's the chat. It's in the chat. You can go over and uh, become a friend of his and he would greatly appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. And bear with me. My, my channel is still in the, in the works. <laughs> so we're just starting, just getting started. Yeah. Camping therapy, RV with kids. I like the new logo, buddy. That actually looks really good. Installing a Rigmaster heater on shore power. What's the advantage? It's just like the one that you have at home. The less times you got to go to the grocery store, the less you got to go out, especially in today's climate. If you can stock up a refrigerator or a freezer and don't have to go out, it's better than having just uh, enough stuff for a couple days, which tends to happen with people who live in an RV. The small refrigerators. Yeah, it's you just it's you just hold more, and then you don't have to go as more as often. Uh, I have a new RV. All going to have 12 volt refrigerator. It's cheaper, and then solar package that comes with the rig. So don't know if it'd be better or cheaper for the manufacturers. It's that's why it's hard to get those big solar packages you on them factory installed. They give you the the we've got it pre-installed or set up for it, but they don't they won't run them for you. You have to go find somebody else to do that for you. And most of the ones that are pre-set up aren't set up for a lot of wattage or a lot of voltage. Right. The, the, and what I mean by that, it's going to be the thickness of the wire. The, right. the higher the gauge, the more more juice you can push through it. And there are plenty of, uh, of diagrams and stuff that you can find on the internet that will give you the wattage and all that other fun stuff. Once you start looking at it, uh, what I recommend is you look at each individual part instead of trying to look at the big mass picture of a solar system. As, as soon as you can break down those individual parts and what they do and how they work, it'll make more sense to you than trying to look at a big diagram. Oh, cool. Yeah, the winter freezers, uh, fridge freezer combos, those are really, really nice, um, especially being 12 volt. And you can, depending on the cubic uh, footage on them, you can, um, they actually work really well. Unpave Explorer, yes, I've been full timing now for six years. And we've actually been on the road for almost two of that. I was living out in Seattle, Washington, and with the way the rent was out there and how expensive it was, we just stayed in a buddy of mine's driveway and parked our RV, and that's where we lived. Saved a lot of money, got got everything ready to go, and went went on the road. 
Yeah, they've got those uh, those little frigid, refrigerator freezers, 12 volt ones that have their own power supply inverter in them that, that will run for days using 12 volts and they actually do really well. Mm. Exactly. We don't have an outdoor fridge, so we have a small fridge that we carry around with us with extra food, drinks when we're boondocking and so on. Exactly. Um, you can also get the ice chest, but that gets kind of a pain if you're trying to run to the store and get more ice. But yeah, they do those. Yeah, uh, Coleman makes a, um, a I think it's a 40 quart uh, thermoelectric 12 uh, volt refrigerator and it cools to like 35 or 40 degrees below the outside ambient air temperature. A lot of truck drivers use them. Um, they plug in the cigarette lighter, but they will draw, they will drain the batteries, you know, in about three days on, uh, on a rig. So I can just imagine what they will draw on a, on two, um, house batteries in a, in a motorhome. But that's a, for boondocking as well, just for, and you can actually, if you have solar panels, you can probably hook a solar panel to it and it'll run just fine. Yes, Susan Bogarvey has one of the 12 volt refrigerator refreezers. And if you look on my stream, you will find a discount code that will save you up to 20% off of the net. Cha ching. Yeah, imagine that. I was doing the, the full timing. Yeah, like you said there, it was more of the tiny house movement was huge. That's what my wife wanted to do when we decided to move into an RV and with her back surgeries and stuff, I just couldn't see her going up and down the steps <laughs> to go to bed and then crawling back down. She would have done that like once fallen off and then we would have been out of the tiny house. So my thought was to convert a bus and she's like, no, we don't have time for that. So then we ended up with the RV. So that's a little bit of the story when it comes to that. Hasn't everybody thought about converting a bus? I think so. Until uh, I started Kathleen, doing. Have a oh, I'm sorry. There until I started doing the research on what it was going to take <laughs> to do it, and then it was like, no. Catherine Klein put a message in there for Michael. Yeah, I just saw that. I'm not sure which uh, Coleman that she's talking about. The Coleman heater, or that's probably uh, the refrigerators because that's what we've been talking about the most. Yeah, I have. Um, Street Smart Steve has another question for you, Aaron. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, another question. Any tips on replacing indoor carpeting and to vinyl flooring? That is was probably one of the first things I did to the RV that we're currently in. It's a 2000 bounder. Um, just start taking out a section and start ripping out the carpets. The best thing to do. And then when you get all of that, all of that done, you're going to find a bazillion, and I'm not kidding, a bazillion staples in the floor. And going <laughs> one at a time, you're going to have to take a scraper, scrape along the floor, and find every single one of those. Because if you miss one of them, it's going to create a nice little dimple in your vinyl flooring. And you'll be like yeah. driving yourself nuts trying to fix that. Because then you've got to rip out that section, put it back in. Um, when I put in my vinyl flooring... I went north and south, meaning the front of the RV to the back of the RV, and I ran them this way. A lot of people like to go east and west, which is a cross grain. Do you want your RV to look longer or wider? That's the one thing you got to think of. Um, another suggestion for that is you need to find the center line of your RV. And when I mean that, it's the the from you measure from one side of the RV to the other side of the RV and then run a chalk line right down the center of it and then start staggering, staggering your planks when you're putting them down. That's, I did not do the, the carpet on my slide at the time. I left it alone because it was in a much better condition than the 1990 carpet that was in here. But yeah, it's, it's really not that hard. It's really time consuming because you got to rip out piece after piece after piece and then trying to find all of those staples. I did it in like three days. You can do it. 
it's fun. It looks really nice when you're done. And then you'll say, you'll never want to do that again. At least that's what I said. And then, of course we got another RV and I did the same damn thing to it. Yeah. With me having to been flooded uh, three times in this motorhome, I had to put new uh, flooring uh, down and yeah. Um, plywood and everything else. This, this last time I, um, I, I took the keeper out. I went with uh, three quarter inch OSB flooring down, and I went to Walmart and I bought the area rugs and I measured out and I bought three of the area rugs and I cut them to fit. And it was cheaper than buying a whole roll of carpet. And then I went to the local um, carpet store and I bought padding. I got uh, half inch padding underneath. And I stapled down just, and you can, it looked like somebody just put it in, uh, did, and I'm not good at laying carpet at all, but took a cheap route, staples, and, you know, who cares? Well, <laughs> what I did in my other one in the front half, I left it in there, left, I took the carpet out, and then I put um, Reflectix down. So it's an insulator, and then put the carpet back over it. And everything I read online said, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. It's going to slide around. It never moved. And it was the warmest part of the whole thing. Uh, camping therapy. Uh, how it flooded three times. The first time it flooded, I was at another uh, spot when I first got this camper. Um, I hooked it up to the water lines. And dummy me didn't know anything about a pressure regulator on a, from the water faucet. And I blew the water lines blew while I was gone on a trip. I come back, I had water pouring out from underneath the camper. And so I had to rip the floor up. And the second time, uh, the water heater line went inside. That was the cold line. It ruptured while I was gone. And so I put a ball valve to prevent that from ever happening again. And this last time, the uh, sink faucet um, started dripping and it went and flooded. So, yeah, me and water don't get along. <laughs> so now when I leave, I make sure all the water valves are shut off, including at, at, the, uh, at the main. Yes, that's if you're going to be gone for any, any, any time whatsoever, extended time, I would recommend the same thing. Especially after yeah. some of the stuff I've seen at RV parks where people come home and their rig is like, walking into a swimming pool that's yeah and it's scary <laughs> you know i come home and and i also now with um i've invested in a heated water hose from camco i got them on um, a good deal uh, for one of those and those work really nice <clears throat> as well and then i bought all kinds of heat tape and stuff like that well to keep my lines from freezing just so you're aware those camco have a problem of failing and it's not where you would expect it to be it's actually where it connects that the brass ring where it connects they break yes. so you'll have I've the brass that. ring connected to where it connects to and the hose will be frozen laying out there just spewing water just be aware of it i'm not saying it's going to happen but it could happen um, yep, New Horizon, that's a funny joke about the amount of staples in the flooring. Um, Lori and I, after doing the first one, swore that that's why RVs are so expensive because they must be charging 10 bucks a piece for those staples, the bajillion of them that were all over the floor. Uh, RV kids, um, I'll be the first one to pack that up and chopped up in pieces to save on uh, the postal rates. I didn't even see that one yet. Uh, we've been full time about the same length of time. Well, that's good. Which is easier to keep clean, the carpet or the vinyl flooring? In my opinion, the vinyl flooring. And I have a Roomba that runs twice a day because of the amount of... I have three dogs, a Three Tails RV. And that Roomba keeps up with the dog hair in here. And I don't have to sit in here to do it. It doesn't replace a clean, clean, but at least it helps to keep the dog <laughs> hair and the sand and all that dirt out of the RV. 
Camping therapy. One grand design reviewed hot water temperatures outside in several months. He said it was amazing outside. Okay. How do you... Okay. You already answered that one. Warfing. Tidal bond uh, <laughs> 111 will work to waterproof wood. It, it, that's true, but you can also use just about any of the polyurethanes. If you put enough coats on it, it's going to seal it and you won't have any issues. And that's about half the price. Question for you, Aaron. Okay. Is you there one three, on here or are you going to ask me? No, I'm okay. asking. With three dogs, do you have dog toys laying around your trailer? We have a special basket for them. And if we go out and they have played with them, then we put them all back. So you don't have to worry about the Roomba going around them. Oh, the Roomba will push them around, but it won't actively act, do anything with it. And we also keep a pad up and up by the driver's seat. So if they have an accident, but the dogs can crawl up and over where the Roomba cannot. And yeah. they don't have to worry about splattered stuff all over the place. No, I was just curious because uh, our dog has a tendency to leave toys all over the place and how that works with uh, with those little remote control vacuums. Oh, it just bumps up against <laughs> them or pushes them. And then it'll stop once it hits a hard object. The, the stuffed animal, it'll just bump against it and go the other direction. Okay. Never had a problem. Yeah, I miss my Roomba. Called my ex-wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whoever came up with the idea of putting carpet in any bathroom, whether it's an RV or a house. I don't understand. I'll never understand, especially with little boys that can't aim. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. Staples and being construction element in today's rigs. Yeah. They got to make them cheap and they got to get them out as fast as possible. When I pulled up the carpet in here, the vinyl that I had, that little strip I had where the uh, the sink is for the kitchen, that actually runs all the way back. I had to go and cut out because it's the same flooring that was in front of my kitchen, in my kitchen area, is the same th th vinyl that they put in for the bathroom. And I'm like, eh, cheapskates. So they just ran one piece along the, the frame all the way back to the bathroom, and after that it quits. I'm pretty sure my vinyl is from, from nose to tail. Probably. Because it's cheaper to do it that way than it is to do the little section at a time. Right. When I worked camp, there was one guy that flooded and pouring out of the bottom of the motorhome. Massive, expensive rig. Uh, most of the time, I've seen that on expensive, expensive rigs, and I've seen it on little, little trashy trailer, uh, travel trailers where people leave them on and it just bursts. All it does is take a little bit of that pressure. They don't use it for a while, and that stuff, that old PEX just psh, disintegrates. That's why you got to keep a couple of those fittings all the time with your RV. Shark bite works wonders, doesn't it? Yes. And it's always good to have uh, one one of the straight ones where you can plug them in together and always to have one of those and a T because you never yeah. know when you're going to need it. Yep, and I have a couple of caps just in case of emergency that just caps off the line. Yep, um, I've done and, that too. And, yep, and underneath my, my bed, I've got two rolls of, uh, of PEX, and I'm starting to accumulate. When I go to the hardware store, I buy an extra PEX fitting just to put it in my, my little toolbox because you never know. Yep. So a lot of people have been yeah. asking me about the – the Reflectix stuff for the RVs. I mean, I've made the screen or the screen, the, the window covers for them. I made a um, slide cover that I put up and across it and made that because the heat, there's a lot. I mean, it's, it's a tin box and a slide. All it is is another tin box that extends. So anything you can wrap around it to help keep the heat in is it's just, it's worth the investment. Or heat out. Yeah. Well, heat, I, cold in, heat out, or however, you know what I mean. 
Well, I've seen Shut this new. I've seen the new thing where people are just taking actual bubble wrap and that uh, window film that you use a hair dryer and put that on the windows and then that for wool insulation. Um, and you could still see out of it. That's the yes. that's the whole premise behind it. What we did when we were in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, I went and got one of those shower curtains, a clear one at the dollar store, and I put that on the outside of it so I could see out, and then put that that window film on the inside, and it created that much of a it was a moisture wind barrier, so the wind wouldn't come through, and the moisture was staying on that sandwiched in between, and it that worked really well. Yes, it, it acts like a double pane window is what it actually ends up being. Well, quadruple because I got double pane windows in here, but it's that metal to metal contact where that wind just rips right through it. Any little gap yeah. or anything. Pulled the carpet out and standing at work in a mat, each free soft. Yep. Actually, what I found was we went to Costco and they have those. Um, rubber mats that have the felt on the front that they use for regular household ones. We ended up getting six of those. I have a vinyl floor and in the wintertime, it gets so cold on that floor that we just threw those mats on top of it. It's like a backyard mat. And I've got those spaced out here and the dogs love them. Where if I don't have the floor covered with something, they can't grip. And it's hilarious to watch them run around the, the RV. People leave their water. Yeah, I don't know why people leave their water on. Go go out of town for a month and then come back and wonder why their their RV is completely flooded. I've like I said, I've seen that too many times. Yes, the bubble wrap, and it's cheaper if you can't find reflectic or anything like that. The bubble wrap works really well. I've seen people even take that bubble wrap and use old um, mm -hmm. uh, pill. Um, pill covers and put the, the bubble wrap in it and then just use the, the pill covers um, and just hold it up into the window. It's a temporary solution, a temporary solution to a permanent problem. Well, get a big blanket and do the same thing. You can go to yeah. any of the thrift stores and find some yeah. heavy wool blankets and just put them up in place. Does the same thing yeah. for a lot cheaper. I've actually I use the uh, the, the real heavy duty um, uh, blackout curtains and and I've got each section of the motorhome sectioned off with that um, the blackout curtains which is really heavy and I'm gonna get a couple more of them and put snaps and I'm gonna put that on the outside of the the windows that are facing to the north to keep the uh, wind out. Well, Steve, you'll. You'll like this. I went and ordered the um, the sunshades for my RV this just this morning. The front three windows because it that sun some, is just brutal. Get some pretty warm sun in there, do you? Oh yeah, even with the reflectics up because the two side windows don't have the panels up. I'm like, mm -hmm. where are those? I don't know. Well, we're ordering these. That'll be in next week. I'll probably do a video on how to install those and my first thoughts. Uh, camping therapy, you'd be surprised how many people don't actually leave their up-to-date cell phone numbers when they register. And I know you know what I'm talking about. So if something like that does happen, we try to give them a call. The only thing I can do is turn it off at the source. And when they get back, they're like, what about my RV or this? I'm, well, we turned off the water. At least we stopped it from having more issues. I really like Reflectix coverage. I also use them. Yeah. I've been using that Reflectix stuff for a long time. It's great stuff. They were asking what the R value was, and somebody said it was a 7, and I'm going, no, it's more like a 3.2. I live single wide home in my own RV mobile carpet in the bathroom. Yeah, that was uh, that's the late 70s and 80s. When we got into this RV, hello. Uh, yeah, it was like a, a pinkish color, the first one I got. It looked like my grandmother's bathroom threw up into an RV. It was I actually horrible. used some of the, the Reflectix here in the house and the rooms that we don't use mm -hmm. to 
try and keep the sun out of those rooms, son. Well, we did that in the wintertime. I mean, I all of my cabinets are lined because when that heat hits it, it it's just not, it just fills them up. You can open up a cabinet and you can just feel that heat just bellowing in at you. Yes, so you in the in the summer conditions, it keeps that heat outside and the cool in and in reverse in the wintertime. So yep. it's always a good thing to have. So how did you attach it to the inside of your cabinets? Just by a staple or? I did it with staples. I went and I, I had a air gun with staples and I just went through and randomly boop, 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 and held it into place. I haven't done it yet, but I've been thinking about doing it. Yeah, it's worth the it's worth the effort because you know what it's oh especially it's when I first got down here, it was I know. And that's why I was like, I'm I'm ordering these. I don't it's three hundred bucks, but it'll be well worth it when in the in the long run. Yep. Actually, RVing with Jay actually went to their page, and it's like 2.4 is what their the R rating is. And what they recommend is to have a space. And that's always the big thing. It has to have a, a cavity that the reflectix is in. So that insulation, however big the cavity is, that's actually creating the R value because it doesn't have the circulation of the air. And that's a big debate on the video I did on using the reflectix. Um, the way I look at it is that I'd rather do that little bit of protection to cool it down instead of adding hundreds and hundreds of weight. Because if I put furring strips up and then put that stuff behind it like it's recommended, that's a lot of extra weight that I just don't need. Yep. And uh, basically you're, you're making it just like a double pane window where there's a gap in between. Yeah. That's what they recommend. I've got it in every, every single, every cabinet's got it. I did it in our um, closet in the back, did the same thing. I could put up a wall of the, of it because it was just so hot. If you're facing one direction more than the other, whatever end it's on, it's just going to be going to be a mess um street smart steve you could um look at a uh canopy or tent um maker that um should be able to make a uh, window cover um uh, for your your mo uh for your coach or you can also look online at amazon sometimes you can find them there or um i'm going to send him a link shop. of what i just bought I'll send him what I just purchased if anybody else is interested in it. And now I'm not putting the affiliate link in this, so it's not going to cost anybody anything to, to look at it. Huh. What I, so I'll what drop I'm that in. Yeah. What I'm fixing to do is I'm fixing to go to tractor supply and buy a canvas, uh, tarp and some grommets because I already have the um, the snaps are on this motorhome but I'm just going to custom make my own um, I've got the time to do it and just be careful with the snaps because they will rust yeah these are stainless steel I looked at these and these are stainless that are on here and that's what I'm going to go back with um, like they for the uh, marine marine grade So I went ahead and put that uh, link for you in there, uh, Street Start Steve, and you can take a look. Those are what I purchased just this morning. Yep, I've done that too with the military blankets and some snaps, but it's easier just to go, like I said, go to the thrift store, pick up some blankets. If they get moldy or mildew on them, you can just pitch them. When that'll help in a in a pinch. When I built my boxy camper, I used two and four. Yeah, that's the advantage of having your own box trailer. 
is that you can do things like that when you've got a an RV that's already supposedly got the insulation in it. There's two inches of foam insulation in my roof, but the sidewalls have nothing. It's just metal with a little uh, cap over the top of it. There's no actual insulation. So I can't afford to rip out that and then have all that space. And then I got to figure out what to do with the windows and all that other fun stuff. So that's why I use the Reflectix. I mean, it's cheap. It's easy. It's effective. It works. Why try and do anything else? Yeah, I just watched a video. A um, guy gutted a uh, a motor home, and he used that spray expandable foam, and then he took a uh, foam knife and cut it to match back the mm -hmm. walls. And mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty slick for insulation. What's going on, DJ? Good to see you here, buddy. Yeah, Lucretia, I know you were worn out from from uh, your eight hour live stream. <laughs> it's a good stream though. Yeah, it was. Kenneth, you having fun over there? Yeah. Kenneth, the wild man Ford dealer over there? Yes, I am. I just been enjoying, enjoying the information that I've been getting listening to. Oh, trust me. Somebody was asking me the other night about um, how I learned so much about winter camping. I'm like, well, trial by frostbite, I think, is how I described it. Because it's when it's cold and your heater don't work, you come up with some creative solutions on how to stay warm. And you do it in a hurry. Yep, Lucretia, our... RVing with G is complimenting on your eight-hour stream. Yeah, I, I froze. Well, it got cold last year when I first got this this coach. And, um, yeah, I had no heat. I parked my, you know, I had my semi next to me. I packed my blankets and my pillow and my teddy bear and went and slept in the, in the uh, semi truck for about a week <laughs> this last winter. Used the boss fuel. <laughs> well yeah it's it's no joke when it gets down to 20 below zero and you're in a and box it does here, it does here Trust in me, you get that wind blowing and it cuts through everything yeah this in lot that i'm at yeah this lot that i'm in right now i have no wind blockage whatsoever i'm i'm like out in the middle of a cornfield come to uh a man, RV park in the middle of Iowa. It used to be a bean field. No kidding. Yeah. I have there the airfield. Yeah, I have the R I have the airstrip right next to me, so I get to listen to airplanes land. That's funny, Kathleen. Uh, we ended up getting um, some thermal socks, the ones, the battery-operated socks, the rechargeable ones, and that's how we kept our toes from falling off, I swear. Uh, James Cantonese is saying that he would camp in PA and never do it again. Well, I don't know. The coldest place is up there in Alaska. I worked at, I worked up there in Fairbanks. I did a driving job for about a month, and I'll never I'll never go up there again. Uh, Badge, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Well, we're talking about uh, mostly about RVs in the wintertime. This, you know, that stuff that you like to deal with up there in Canada. Okay. Canada where? Can where? Oh, there are neighbors to the north. Oh, okay. Um, Kathleen, um, the hay bales are a great idea, except um, where I'm at, we have a thing called field mice. And uh, no, thank you. <laughs> we had that um, happen to our truck when we were in Missouri. They actually got it. I think it was a squirrel because my wife used to really make the squirrels mad. And they chewed up a couple wires on there. And it took me forever to do the troubleshooting and get so that it would run again. Always mad at that squirrel. 
I actually um, got some rolls of that um, mobile home uh, skirting uh, given to me, and that's going to be my project this weekend. Is I'm going to cut it and and put it underneath the um, the motorhome here and um, put that all together. Yeah, there's tons of how tos on doing that. Yeah, out there. Just don't use bales of hay. I don't know whoever started that idea. It doesn't understand what mice do in the wintertime. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one of the challenges is that uh, camper van, Kevin, he's the one that had a problem with uh, – he did the hay bales at one point, and uh, he had, had mice. Yeah, because anywhere it's warm, that's where they'll be. Yeah. Uh, electric blankets, um, it depends on which type of electric blanket you're getting and what size mattress you're covering as to how much wattage it will use, but you can try them. If you um, wake up in the morning and you don't have any lights and your battery's dead, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Well, also, um, talking about uh, keeping your mattress warm, um, the truck stops, um, they have these um, mattress pad, the heated mattress pads that plug right into your 12 volt. And um, they got them for the twin size and all the way up to a full size. And those work really well. I've got one in my, in my semi and set that about two. And it's nice in the winter uh, after a long day's driving and crawling to a warm bed. Yep. And I'm sure you would, Go green, mom. I'm sure you'd like to check out his heated bed. <laughs> Let's see. Deej says that electric blankets wattage run for 35 watts. Electric blanket power usage is about 70 watts. And it's similar to the power consumption of a 15 watts on low at 65 to 70 watts on high. So there you go. News rising. What are you doing? Cats. <laughs> They're giving, <laughs> but, They're giving but, poor man a hard time. Because he disappeared. He probably had to go to the bathroom. Uh -huh. Insulated tarp will help. Lots. I got two layers of R7. Oh, that'll work too. Did you put that over your uh, slides there, Badge? I was born in Texas, but I'm an Iowa farm boy. My grandparents had farms in Iowa, too. So, Well, you know what they say, what the uh, the letters of Iowa stand for? It's intelligence Idiots. out wandering around. No, I'd say Idiots. intelligence. Was Idiots <laughs> out walking around. Well, I was going to be nice and say intelligence out walking around. You know why Chicago, they call Chicago the Windy City? Because Iowa blows. Yeah. You know what AIDS stands for? Another Iowan discover sex. I've heard them all. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what I haven't heard. Uh, hi, Aaron. I made a point. California. Oh. He's one of my electric blankets run off of. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Running off a of 12 volt timer for 30 minutes. Man, that works. I haven't seen those, but that would be an interesting way of doing it. Man, like Rock is a heated bed and heated seats. Inserts. Yes. Everybody wants to talk about Mr. Mr. Ray. He beat a popular guy these time. Well, he's handsome. Young. <laughs> yeah. Us old guys, we just sit around and talk about fixing our RVs. Uh, couldn't run electric blanket on a Jackery. Yeah, for I'm what, sure about three you hours? can. Uh, probably about longer three. than that. Depending on which one you have. You could probably do it, yeah. Lucretia, did you get the 300? Because I know they're sold out of them now, or did you get the 1,000?
if it'll run a TV for 16 hours, it should be able to run a 70 watt electric blanket for the same amount of time. For the 500 anyway. Do you know what to get a Wyoming boy for Christmas? Uh -huh. Velcro pants. Yeah. Who has multiple personalities? Don't talk about Mr. Ford Man up there like that. We'll see. Susan, with that, there's actually, they sell five inch, inch um, foam. And what I ended up doing is the gap between the RV and the slide. That's where those, your, um, wow, until I'm getting tired. That's where the, um, the plastic piece is that, that uh, goes between your slide and the RV. The seal is at. If you take that five inch foam and stick it in that gap between the RV and the the slide, that actually seals that all up and the air can't get into it. And you go all the way around the outside of your slide with it and you won't get anything in through that slide. That's that's your little quick tip for the night. If that makes any sense. It's like taking a pool noodle and putting it in, in the gap, basically. I got a wave eight inside, a wave three under the trailer, and two heaters running on low. Well, it runs off a two hundred watt circuit. Yeah, if it's thirty below zero, Dodge or badge, it it's yeah, you have to do something like that. Yeah, I just bought the uh, today. I just ordered the. Um, the mats that uh, hook um, you stick on the bottom of your your uh, water tanks and uh, to keep keep them from freezing. The tank heaters. Yes, the tank mats. Yes, I just ordered. Uh, I got three of those on Amazon for ninety bucks. That's really and good so, price. Did you get the yeah. twelve volt switches for, to go along with that? I have a gang. Um, I have. I've got a, some um, space in my gang gang switches. Okay. And uh, yeah, because I bought um, a sixteen uh, button gang switch panel from a from one of the race car guys here in town, and for forty bucks, it's got all the toggle switches and stuff like that, and all the fuses. Uh, so it actually, doesn't have fuses. It has circuit uh, circuit breakers. So, Ford, man, everybody is curious why you just up and left and didn't say anything. And they want to make sure you're, you washed your hands when you came back. And yes, I sure, did. You, you missed all the comments, so you'll have to read up on all those. You'll be turning bright red again. <laughs> no, I, no, I ran the mobile phone. Yes, that's... Deej, that's one of the things that we constantly deal with in the RV is the condensation. Um, you can leave the uh, one of your vents open a little bit. That helps with the airflow, but you're also going to lose heat out of it. Um, I run two different de dehumidifiers. I got the little small ones, and I've got one in the bedroom, and I got one in the, the main cabin, and they run 24-7 when it's cold just to keep the moisture levels down. I'm dumping those a couple times a week. Yeah, I think I just answered that, Lucretia. If not, if you want to know some more, let me know. He pooed. <laughs> nope. Going Green Mom, you want to shout okay. out? Going Green Mom, if you'd like to go ahead and put your link in the description, go ahead or in the chat, go ahead and do that. You got a, what? what video do you have coming out tomorrow? That one. Uh, the, tank, the tank heaters work awesome. Very good deal. 
I only turn them on to 20. Oh, oh, oh you only turn them on if it's colder than 20 below zero. <laughs> okay, Dodge. <laughs> <Air badge. laughs> 20 below zero. Yeah. I don't want to be in that situation. I'll go south. Thank you. Definitely. Oh, but you love this frozen tundra in the middle of the Midwest, don't you? Oh, well, he's a little further north, eh? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, they hate when I say that. <laughs> What's this one? Open the window works awesome. Works better than a vent. Yep. Hey, you let when you're open your vent. And if anybody would know, badge. Yeah, because you lose too much heat going out the vents. That makes complete sense. And there's going green's mom's link. We have, haven't had any real problems with condensation in the class, day, but haven't done much winter camping. Well, it's still good information to have in case you do start getting the condensation. Watch how tightly you pack your. Uh, closet in the back because if you get it too densely populated you'll you'll definitely uh smell the aroma of mildew back there i know you can't go south i wish you could but one of these days they'll figure it out and finally open that border up there you go you want a good good meal there you go <laughs> You're not doing turkey in the Instapot? Come on. <laughs> Ideal recipes for turkey after Thanksgiving. You think that would be a good good video? I know you say A all the time, especially if after you've had a few uh, adult beverages there, Deej. Oh, Ranger Rob. There's a name I haven't seen in a while. Good to see you, Rob. We got to remove everything from the walls and nothing can touch the walls. Yep, yeah, exactly. Because if it does and that sweat, we'll just soak it up. Wow. I actually got through the chat. Yeah, I was just going to say something to you. You knew I was because you looked up as soon as I was thinking, get off of girlsgirlsgirls.com there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there. I, I thought he was there looking at... Uh, MidgetLovers.com, looking for a girlfriend. Nope. Not not interested right now at the moment. Mm -hmm. At the moment. <laughs> That's what he says. He's married to his left hand. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've noticed that too with um, our three pups there, Susan, uh, with the humidity. But we're not having any problems this year. I don't know why. They're not drying out their skin as much in Florida. But it does happen. Until well, have a good night, drinking. Lucretia. Now the only thing I have to worry about is uh, those little freaking, what are those lizards called? Is there a lot of lizards? No, we're not doing those. We, we don't even care about that. Multiple kind of lizards here. Well, the little brown ones. Just the lizards. Okay, the lizards. Anyway, those little suckers. We went to go change out the poop bags in one of the dispensaries here. And my wife popped that thing off, and there was four of them behind there. And they all went through at the same time. Mm -hmm. I've never seen her jump out of her skin so fast in my entire life. Then I went out, and you warned me about those stupid little toads. And I went out to go dump my black tank put my hand up underneath the gret to open the 
the bay and one of those stupid toads was in there. I'm like, yes. and then the way that those are set up, there's a hole. He crawled all the way back in there and he was hiding from me. And all I seen was his little beady oh, yeah. eyes. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I had the same problem with my, the back doors of my truck. When I go to open the back door of my truck. <laughs> Aaron, you're lagging. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, somebody's lagging. Don't you like it, dude? <clears throat> and now you're frozen. And now you're frozen. I have a little. I have a problem with. I have a problem with little uh, baby turkeys running around in my camp in my trailer when I open the doors once in a while. Little bastards. What time is it? It is twenty to twelve. You said turkeys. Yes, I haul um, baby turkeys. Um, they're called poults, and um, for the genetics company that I work for. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting. It's an interesting job. Um, 